What's up everyone, welcome back to Wait Your Turn, it's Jordan, and today we're looking at a special little card game by Taylor Doolittle Games. Now on Kickstarter, they were kind enough to send me a prototype of this game uh, far in advance, and they've given me plenty of time to review it, play it, and thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, so before we get into the bones of what this game is, uh, I'm going to give you a brief overview and then we're going to play through a single round of this game. It's actually simple enough for me to actually demonstrate how this game is played and then I'll go over the pros and cons as we play through it, give some final overall thoughts and then my conclusion as to whether this game is backable or should be backed by you. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. 3, 2, 1, let's go. Reincarnated is a competitive karmic card game for 2 to 4 players to be enjoyed in as little as 15 to 20 minutes. Players will find themselves at the beginning of their karmic life cycle as they incarnate from a variety of mundane shrubbery into a variety of reptilian, avian, marine, mammalian, botanical, and arthropodic beings, yes, including bugs, in order to finally achieve their life purpose, to score as many points as possible. Reaching Nirvana has never been easier or more satisfying. In order to begin, each player receives a single life purpose card, a single starter bean card ranging from dandelions to turnips, and finally two insidious karma cards. Your life purpose determines how you score points as you build out your lifeline and begins face down at the beginning of the game. This is incredibly important as certain karma cards will allow you to glimpse your own life purpose as well as those of your opponents. Your life purpose card also introduces your unique win conditions and how you obtain points, whether that means prioritizing marine animals or having a specific animal in your lifeline by the end of the game. Personally, I really enjoyed this design. I really liked how it kept every playthrough fresh and new, and the layout was very clean and professional, and the quality can only improve with their Kickstarter campaign. The only caveat I will mention, however, is that obtaining the correct animal type there being six different animal types in the game was sometimes difficult or felt like it was prone to the luck of the draw. But more on that in a second. In addition to your life purpose card, the player will also draw two karma cards that have a variety of effects from peeking at your own life purpose cards or that of your opponent to killing, stealing, or reviving beings from your or other players' lifelines. You can look at these at any time. Finally, the player will also draw their first starter being. This will determine your first incarnation and will be placed face up in front of you. Looks like we're a fern this time. As the player incarnates additional beings in their path of reincarnation, you will place each animal to the right of your starter being in a sprawling chain of reincarnation. Once a player has been dealt their starter being, a life purpose, and their hand of karma cards, go ahead and deal out eight beings from the being deck to form the being pool. Now this is where the game begins in a very simple and elegant uh, karmic unfolding. <laughs> Each turn a player can either play two karma cards or play one karma card and incarnate a single being from the being pool. Each being as you can see has their own unique effect whether it's to replenish the being pool, kill another opponent, or allow you to play other karma cards based on what's in your lifeline, what's in the being pool. There's a lot of interaction that's happening right here. However, before you actually incarnate a being, you should first know how to incarnate a being, which is actually very simple and can be found on the upper left corner of each being. In this case, I start out as a fern and I have a, both a primary incarnation goal a secondary incarnation goal, and then an unseen tertiary incarnation possibility, which is just from going from a plant to another plant. If we incarnate from a fern into a mammal, indicated by this gray symbol up here, we can draw two karma cards. So there's a reward for meeting certain goals. On the other hand, if we go from a fern to an insect, uh, incarnation, we only receive one karma card, and if we just go from plant to plant without really advancing our lifeline and experience, we gain zero karma cards, but we do, however, gain beings along our lifeline. So let me demonstrate what this means. So for this fern, we do have an orangutan and a meerkat as mammals in our being pool, which are actually pretty viable targets to incorporate into our lifeline. In this case, we're going to go ahead and take the orangutan. 
Uh, there is a durian in this which does have interactions there. And we're going to go ahead and put that to the immediate right side of our fern. We gain two karma cards as a result of this. And we could have actually played a karma card before incarnating this orangutan, but I'm skipping a step. So we gain two karma cards, place that in our hand. We have a card limit of seven cards in our hand at this point. But we've gained the orangutan. Uh, and immediately, two things will happen. Once we incarnate a being, we need to replace that card. So we take a card from the being pool and put it there. It is a mouse, another animal, mammalian figure. And of course, then we trigger the effect of the orangutan, which in this case, if you have the durian in your lifeline, you may play up to two extra karma cards this turn. Unfortunately, the durian is in the being pool at the moment, so we can't trigger that. But you can kind of see how the combos, how these combos would work out had we had the durian in our in our lifeline originally. So we could have, potentially, instead of gone for the orangutan to get two karma cards, we could have selected the durian, received no karma cards, and then have aimed for the orangutan later. However, this being a three-person game, that doesn't seem very likely at the moment. So that is the end of player number one's turn, and then we move on to the next player in which they'd look at their karma cards, decide whether to play one or two of those, and then perhaps if they only play one karma card, incarnate one of these beings. Uh, player number two isn't much, any much better, being an incarnation of cotton. They can either incarnate a reptilian animal form, which there are none on the board at the moment, or a arthropod uh, animal form, which we do, we have a mosquito. So it's very possible I mean, we don't know what our life purposes are at this point quite yet, uh, but it could be good to incarnate a mosquito and or just play two karma cards to either determine and ascertain our life purpose or interact with here. In this case, player number two might want to get this durian away from this orangutan because there is a relationship or kind of symbiosis happening here. So there's a lot of choices that we can already see emerging at this stage of the game and uh, it's, it's actually rather educational and enthralling to see all of these interactions and especially these, this, this ecosystem unfold before us. So even though the game is about reincarnation, it's a very thin veil over this network and ecosystem of interactions between animals, insects, plants, birds, and marine wildlife. So surprisingly nature-oriented for the package. Overall, uh, this cycle of playing karma cards, incarnating a being, uh, refilling the being pool, it creates a very fresh, tight core game loop. I, I really enjoy the cycle. It's always fresh. There's always something new to discover, especially how these cards interact. And it's it sometimes it actually spells it out. Like the meerkat interacts directly with the warthog, the leaf insect interacts directly with plants, insects, the orangutan inter interacts directly with durian. There's a number of interactions based on kind of the luck of the draw. In this case, certain cards only interact with certain cards as long as they're in the being pool or in your lifeline. And these combos are baked into the cards in a very simple way. Once you use the card or incarnate the card, it just triggers if those cards are there. Once a player incarnates the human form, they gain five points and trigger the end game. At this point, each other player takes one final turn reveals their life purpose, and tallies up the final score. At $23, this game is fun, it's casual, it's tight, it's transportable, and it's professionally presented in a way that is light and easily accessible and introducible to many, many game groups. There is some randomness, however. I want to make that a little clear. Certain life purposes will be favored more heavily based on what beings have been replenished in the being pool based on the luck of the draw, based on the beings that you replenish. Obviously, there are karma cards that can influence this, they can speed up the rate at which cards are replenished, but sometimes certain players will be digging for certain types of animals, whereas certain players will always have these incarnated beings readily available. So that can be difficult just based on the life purpose that you're dealt, as well as the beings that are present. Uh, it's all very random in that case. And at the end of the game, obviously the player who has a ready stream of incarnated beings throughout the course of the game will most likely win over a player who has had a, a difficult time incarnating beings from turn one, especially if one player needs plants and another player needs animals and it's just all been plants. That's a situation that happened a couple of times, but 
perhaps as you shuffle and the cards are just more balanced, uh, that wouldn't be as big an issue. However, even though there was that randomness present, it did not and does not diminish the enjoyment I felt playing this game. The experience, the animals, the interactions, and the, the ecosystem that you're actually building and I guess embodying and incarnating was fun and entertaining enough and even educational enough that the whole experience was almost more important than the final score. I'm more of a casual card player. I, don't, I couldn't imagine myself playing this uh, strictly and competitively to win at all costs, but this game definitely has a casual feel to it that just made it pleasant and enjoying and even the aesthetic is nice and light and pleasing. Uh, this is a nice casual game to just, just experience with friends and I really like that uh, more, more than anything about this game. In the end, Reincarnate won my heart and comes fully recommended as a wonderful casual card game that is simple enough to introduce into any game group while exciting and exploratory in a sense that will allow you to easily replay it and bring it out at a moment's notice. So overall, should you back it, if you enjoy a nice light card game that can be played with two or more people, I don't think four is actually necessarily a limit for this game, while also having nice, beautifully illustrated cards and colorful little animals, <laughs> I could not recommend this any higher. Um, overall, it's not necessarily, at least at this point, competitively balanced in a sense. Some life purposes are better than others. There is some randomness based on card draws that may stymie some life purpose objectives compared to others. That's always, at least for now, apparent in this prototype. Um, but ultimately, it's light, it's wonderful, the combos are real and immersive, and I've fully enjoyed it with the times that I've played this game. So go ahead and check out Reincarnated. I'll put the link in the description below. It's on Kickstarter right now, I believe. And go ahead and subscribe for more Kickstarter info and board game news. So thanks everyone for watching. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Take care. Thank you for watching. Thank you for waiting. And now it's your turn.